Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Jennifer Taylor, and today's tutorial is all about analyzing interval data in SPSS. Before we get started, I would like to review really quickly uh, scales of measurement. So as you may remember, if you're in my class, we have four primary scales of measurement, ratio scales, interval scales, ordinal scales, and nominal scales. And these scales um, range in terms of robustness and they can be transformed into lower level measurement scales, but they cannot be transformed into higher level measurement scales. So ratio scales are the most robust scales, meaning that they can be transformed into interval, ordinal or nominal data. And nominal data is considered the least robust in that it can't be transformed into anything. And today we're going to be talking about the second highest level of scale of measurement scales, which is interval scales. And so interval scales can be transformed into ordinal and nominal data, but they cannot be transformed into ratio data. So what exactly is interval data? Well, interval data is the second highest of level of measurement, like I just discussed, and it has measurement items that are categorical, hierarchical, and these categories have equal groupings. And this is where it is a distinction between ordinal data. So ordinal data has unequal groupings and interval data has equal groupings. And this is very important um, because this uh, tells us what we can or cannot do in terms of statistical analysis. So some examples are uh, income when you have the categories measured by equal groupings. So maybe you have it zero to 9,999, 10,000 to 10, 19,999, and so on and so on, and they're in equal groupings, and you cover all possible income categories that respondents could answer. You can also do frequencies of visit in an interval data form. Um, for example, if you had a restaurant and you knew the maximum amount that people could visit was, say, um, 14 times because you only serve breakfast and lunch, so you could create equal intervals um, around that range of, it could be zero to 14 and create those equal groupings. Uh, Likert scales are, are also considered interval data. So you can have um, five point scales that measure importance, agreement, quality, satisfaction, and those are in marketing considered interval data. Now it's important for me to emphasize that in other disciplines, Likert scales are not considered interval, they're considered ordinal. However, in marketing, the predominant understanding is that it is an interval scale and we report the means. Uh, so if, you just, if you're in a camp where, where they uh, consider it an ordinal variable, then you cannot report the mean. So what statistics are reported? Well, for interval data analysis, we report the arithmetic mean, the median mode, frequency count, and frequency percentage. So if you remember from ordinal data, ordinal, you could only report the median mode, frequency count, and frequency percentage. This time we're adding an additional statistic that you can report, which is the arithmetic mean. So how do you analyze interval data in SPSS? Well, you can use the, the pets and more SPSS data that I've provided to you in either your LMS, your Blackboard or Canvas tutorial content folder, or you can use the link to the data set in the YouTube box description below. So let me open that up for you. Okay, and if you open it up, it should look like this. So this is the pets and more data. Uh, you'll see we have the variable names, uh, the type, the width, the decimals. We have the labels, which are the survey questions. So if you open that up, you will see the survey questions that were asked to respondents. Uh, the values, which are the categories of answers that the 
Respondents could answer. So for this question, how often do you visit pets and more? Uh, is daily, two to three times per week, once per week, two to three times per month, monthly, once every two to three months, once every six months, once a year, less than once a year. And so we have that scale, which if you remember about scales, that makes it because they're unequal groupings and that's right, ordinal variable. And as you can see, I have labeled it ORD1, which stands for ordinal variable. I typically do not name my scales this way, but to make it easier for those of you who are new to ordinal, nominal, interval, and ratio data, I wanted to make it a little bit easier. But ORD means ordinal variable, RIT means ratio variable, NOM means nominal, INV means interval uh, data. Typically, if this was a survey I was analyzing, I would name it try to name it as close as possible to what the question is. So for this one, it would be visits. Uh, for this one, on average, how much do you spend? I would put spend. Uh, the primary reason, I would put reason as the variable name. All right. So now that we've opened up the data, we want to identify our interval variables. And granted, you can look here and you can, you know, look and say INV, that's an interval. INV2 is an interval. INV3 is an interval. However, if you don't have data that is already pre-labeled for you, which you won't, the question is how can you identify interval variables? And in order to do that, you first have to look at the questions and then look at the scales that were used, those measurement scales. What were the measurement items that we used? And so for on average, how much did you spend? There is no measurement scale. So we know that um, it's a ratio variable. Uh, what is your primary reason? And these are just categories. There's no hierarchy. So that makes it a nominal variable. Um, overall, how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with the selection? This is a Likert scale, a seven point Likert scale with extremely dissatisfied and extremely satisfied as the anchors. That makes it an interval scale. How fairly or unfairly are your products? Again, this is another Likert scale, a seven point with extremely unfairly to extremely fairly. How high or low quality are the products? And it is Another seven point Likert scale, extremely low to extremely high quality. Uh, what is your year of birth? That has none, so that's a ratio. A highest level of high school. It is ordinal, it has categories that are hierarchical, but no intervals. And then nom two underscore one through nom two underscore six. Choose uh, one or more races that you consider yourself to be. This would be a multiple response nominal variable. Uh, what is your gender? It's categorical, no hierarchy. That means it's nominal. And please indicate the answer that includes your entire household income. Uh, we have intervals of $10,000 until we get to 11 and 12. And then it becomes mar much larger, which makes this unequal groupings, which makes it an ordinal variable. So now we've identified our three interval variables. Let's go ahead and analyze those. So in order to analyze them, we're gonna hit analyze. So this button right up here, analyze, descriptive statistics. We're going to go to frequencies and we're gonna click frequencies. Now, if you right click, you can, and you hover it over the question name, you can display variable names, which is what I prefer because it's easier for me to understand what questions they are. And then if I click this top one and then I hit the shift key and then I right click it, I can highlight all three. And I wanna add those variables over here into this variable box. So now I know which, now SPSS knows which variables they want to be analyzed. Now we're gonna click what statistics we want. And so this is interval data, so we can do the mean, the median, the mode, and then frequency charts.
So we have the frequency tables already clicked here. So we are good and we can click OK. And so as you'll see, we have the output. We It displays the question name, interval. Uh, INV1 is overall how satisfied. INV2 is how fairly or unfairly the products are priced. INV3 is the quality. And you can see that it has a mean uh, for INV1 of 3.87 with a median of four and a mode of three. For INV2, it has uh, a little bit lower of a mean, 3.66, 4.0 median mode. And it indicates that there are two modes. And we can look at this in just a second and see what that second mode is. Um, but the lowest value mode is a three. And for INV, Three, we have a uh, 4.76 as the mean, a median of five, and a seven as the mode. So we can look down here. We can see the labels for our scales have been put down this right side. We have our frequency, our percent, our valid, per our valid percent, and our cumulative percent. Our frequency is the count. Our percent is the percent of the sample um that selected this answer and a valid percent is happens when we have missing data so if you look up here you'll see we have missing we have no missing data if we had missing data then this table would include one more row that would be um, system missing and it would give you a count and then a percent a valid percent cumulative percent um, the percent numbers would then include those missing, uh, the respondents who had missing answers. The valid percent takes out those missing answers and gives you a percentage based on how many people answered the question. Um, so that's the difference between percent and valid percent. You can see in terms of our mode, the one that uh, was most frequently chosen was three, slightly dissatisfied. Uh, for the second one, we had two modes, so 25 and 25. So this was uh, three and four are our modes. And then our mode here is one, two, three, four, five, slightly high. That one, oh, I'm sorry, seven, slightly seven. That's our highest number right here uh, for the count. And so that is how you create the output. What you need to make sure to do next is save it. So you do a save as, and then you save it to wherever you typically save it. If you're on campus, I recommend that you save it to your OneDrive so that you can access it on any computer on campus. Um, if you don't save it to your OneDrive, it'll be saved to the computer that you are located currently located at and you will not be able to access it anywhere else. So go ahead and make sure you save that because you are going to need that output for your assignments and you're also going to need it to be able to create your charts, which another tutorial will help you with that. But that is it on how you analyze interval data. Please click like if this video was helpful and don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to learn how to transform SPSS output into Excel charts that you can use for your data presentations, then please go to my video entitled Transforming SPSS Output into Excel Charts, which is under my reporting and presenting data playlist. Other than that, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you very much. Bye.